So Angular introduced a new experimental zoneless mode in version 18. That means we can actually get rid of the zone.js dependency and that's nice. But what does it exactly mean? And Angular has a nice overview on its uh, official website angular.dev explaining uh, what zone zoneless means, how it works. But I really wanted to try it out in a practical experiment myself. So I did a simple application, uh, something like this, to actually test out what has changed in the new zoneless mode. And what difference is this going to bring in your Angular apps? So I set up an application uh, with a parent and two children components. Now both of these components are identical. So each of the components has four different types of data. Now if you go in the code here, you can see that each of the component has a property data and then it has a signal data. Then it has an input data and then it has an observable data, which is basically the behavior subject. So these are the four data types or four sources of data that we have that I'm trying to capture and test out the change detection process here. And then as you can see on the UI, we have buttons which actually trigger the change in these uh, four different types of data. So the inputs you can get from outside in from the parent component for this child and this for this child. And apart from a synchronous update to the specific data, we can, we also added a timeout, a two second timeout. Now this is because uh, I wanted to capture asynchronous events and how it changes those data and whether it gets change detected or not. This will also cover the case where there are network requests. So network requests are also async requests. So uh, both of these cases are going to get captured in this after two seconds timeout check for all of the data points, all right? And for the inputs, I have kept a bit of a more interesting thing. So for the first child, I have kept the input as a property. For the second child, I have kept the input as a signal value. All right, just to see how these nuances work of change detection when we change from signal to property. And of course, these bells that you see here, this is actually the main object of interest, which is when change detection is going to run. So this tells us which change detection for this component runs and I'm using the ng after view checked lifecycle method, which basically happens when Angular runs, has run the change detection for that specific component. So I just ring the bell in that case, all right? And let me show you how the bell rings. So you can see the bell rings like this. So, but there is also another render bell here. So there's a change detection bell, which tells you whether the change detection is being run and there's also render bell. Now this I added to the app after I got a reply from someone from the Angular team when I posted some sort of questions about the change detection process that I found in Zoneless. So Andrew Scott was really kind enough to give an input about the after render hook, which is a global application wide hook, which runs when Angular actually synchronizes the UI with the data. So I also added this just so, the, so we can see what happens when Change detection is not run, but the UI is synchronized through signals, for example. And this is only one because it is only applicable to the application as a whole. All right. Okay. So enough of theory. Uh, you can see the application now. And now we can test out first the default change detection and then the zoneless change detection to see what actually changes. Okay. So let's go to our app and let's uh, go in app.com. And you can see here that I don't have any provider here given for zone or zoneful. So the default is basically a zone change detection. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. That means we are going to test out the default change detection first. So let's try and test out our app. So let's first try out a property value. Now for a property value, when we click on update, you can see that the change detection bells run and also the render runs for all components. All right. So this is pretty explanatory. And this is because zone JS actually patches everything. Zone.js listens to uh, event listeners, user events. It listens to asynchronous events like timeouts. It also listens to intervals. It listens to network calls. So it listens to quite a, a lot of events and it signals to the Angular uh, framework to actually perform change detection. So when we click on this, the listener is notified and Zone.js tells Angular that, okay, you need to run change detection and the property updates with the button. Okay, let me just refresh it and do it again. So you can see the property updates here. All right, now let's try out the timeout. So when you do after two seconds timeout, you can see after two seconds, the property value updates and all of the change detection runs as it did with the normal button. So why did that happen? That happens because again, zone.js listens to the timeouts as well. So change detection is going to run on every asynchronous event as well. Let's try it again. You can see that it does it again. Okay. So property value works. Let's go to the observable data. 
Okay, let's try out the signal next. So when we update the signal, you can see the change direction runs, everything runs as before. And after two seconds timeout, everything happens the same. Again, because zone JS is running on the timeout. So it is triggering the change detection normally. Let's try to use the observable and update the observable data by using the next function. So we're gonna update this. Let, when we update it synchronously, it's happening because of user events. And if, when we do it after timeout, Again, it is happening because zone.js is notifying Angular about the timeout itself. Okay, now let's try out the input property. So if we trigger an input property from outside, from the parent, we just change a property. You can see that change detection runs and a new property value is updated here, the input. And when we do it after two seconds, you can see that the property updates as it should. This is again because the timeout runs change detection. So in short, no surprises here. This works the default as it does now in most of the apps and it's fine. Now let's move on and see the interesting part and see what happens when we shift to zoneless. Okay, so how do we shift to zoneless? Now to shift to zoneless, what we're gonna do is we just have to go in our providers and we have to do provide experimental zoneless change detection here. All right, the second thing we will need to go in our angular.json and we can remove our zone, our zone JS here in the polyfills. Okay, so now there is no zone JS, it's not part of the bundle, and we can now test out how zoneless apps work. Okay, okay, so let's first test out the property again. So if you update the property here and we click on update, you can see that okay, the property updates fine as before. But this is not because of zone JS now. This is because if we go on the zoneless documentation for Angular, they give some three or four conditions or notifications which Angular uses to sort of find out whether change detection needs to run. And one of them is bound host or template listener callbacks. So whenever there is an event listener or a callback in a component, the change detection is going to run for all of the app. So you can see here that when we click on update button here, you can see the change detection runs and the render also runs. Both of these runs and this works properly. But what happens with the timeout? So let's try that. So for the timeout, you can see nothing happens. So this is exactly the change that zoneless brings. Now there is no zone JS now listening on the timeout. So this means that nothing is notifying Angular about that change and a simple property does not have anything to notify Angular about that change as well. So behind the scenes, the property has changed, but it's not being updated on the UI. Now to test that, to force an update, we can actually just trigger change detection like this. And you can see the property updated after two seconds appears here, which means now it's synchronized. So, but property did not work. So this is a change in zoneless. Okay, let's move on to the observable this time and see what happens. So when we click on observable update here, you can see the observable update of the button. That's fine. All of the change detections ran. You can do it again. So this happens because again, the event listener always triggers change detections. And this is something I need to remind myself and I thought that it wouldn't happen, but this is the behavior even with zoneless. And let's try out two seconds timeout, whether it works or not. And when we click on this and yes, an observable updates after two seconds, even through a timeout. Now there's no zone just listening on this. So why is this happening? This is happening because if I look at the code in my change detection component and I go in my observable here, I, you can see that I am using the async pipe here. And then if you go in your documentation for zoneless, you are going to see that it marks for check whenever it's called automatically by async pipe, which means whenever you use the async pipe with an observable, it is automatically going to trigger change detection. So since we are using async pipes with the observable, it triggers change detection as before. So we did not have the pro value with a simple property that we saw inside of a timeout. Okay. So observables will work as long as they are async pipe. Okay. Now let's move on to the interesting part, which shows a lot of change in promise, the signals section. So when we click on update for a signal, this is fine. And this is understandable because the event listener is triggering change detection as it is. But when we click on two seconds timeout, something interesting happens. Now what happened here? The change detections did not run anywhere, but this render event ran, which means the UI was synchronized and this value also updated here. Now this is exactly the fine grained reactivity, which Angular team has been talking about for a long time since the signals reactivity APIs were introduced. So you can actually use this fine grained reactivity now with the zoneless mode. And it's really exciting, especially for those people who are working on interactive applications or animations based libraries, for example, 
they can really cause ui updates without causing the whole app to perform change detection itself of course there's one more interesting thing and when i try to for example update this again you're going to see nothing happen uh, now angular knows exactly what has changed and whether it has changed as well so you can see the built in memoization of signals that since i was setting the same value again nothing ran not the change detection not even the render so it did not render the thing again because it knows that the signal value hasn't even changed so let's revert it back to the button value and then when we try out a 2 seconds you can see we'll get that same behavior the render ran and the signal was updated so this is sort of the most significant change that you would see in the zoneless mode especially with signals okay so let's move on to inputs now inputs also gives you an interesting thing to think about uh, let's try about the property input first so let's first trigger the input property first and you can see that the change detection runs normally as before and this is because of the event listener so an event listener always causes change detection and you can see everything works as before but what if we do after 2 seconds let's try this out so as if i was saw with property before after 2 seconds there is no zone js to trigger to change detection so nothing happens basically now even though this input property is being passed on to the input to this component nothing happens that means that even if the property is being passed on to a um, child component it's not going to trigger change detection now this is sort of contradictory with what's written here about the change detection being fired on set input but apparently properties don't trigger the set input simple properties so let's try out a signal now now when we trigger input the signal here you can see the input is changing here when i am keep clicking on it but because of the event listener the change detection keeps calling like it normally does but what if we do it after 2 seconds okay what just happened now okay so the change detections for these two components or the child components are is running fine but this change detection is not running and but render is running because the data is changing so the render runs that means the change detection is called but only for the child components so whenever a, only a signal changes in a component the change detection for that component does not run and you can see it here as well now this sig- uh, input basically is a signal in the parent component so when we sort of change the signal in the parent component the change detection does not run in the parent component but it does run in the children why because this child has an input with the signal so the input value changes and so the change detection is triggered let's try this again see the change detection of this does not happen so and to test this out further we can also make a small change so for example if i go here and in my app component i remove this input data for the second child here now the signal in the parent now is not being used anywhere and let's try to see what happens so when we do it after 2 seconds nothing happens no change detection is run and no render is run because the the signal does not show up anywhere on the ui all right and then we when we put it back again you can see the same behavior again so we can, we can be rest assured that the change detection for these components is being run because we have an input change and the input sort of set input method is being called which is triggering change detection for these child components another issue is that this child component is fine because this has the input signal given to it but why is this child input triggering change detection now this is something this is something of a mystery because this child input is basically linked to this property which is a single property then this is not changing so why is this change detection running and why is this not now i added in another component just to test and basically all of the child components at that level were running change detection now i'm not sure how this happens but maybe somebody can explain or provide some insight into what is exactly happening here so this is in effect what changes or what triggers change detection and what does not trigger change detection in zoneless apps now before moving on if you're finding value in this video uh, i'll invite you to like and subscribe this video so that you can get notified of more future videos like this and if you want to show your support you can also um, consider buy me a coffee uh, on my bmc page the link to which is given here okay so some of my little takeaways from this little experiment that i did on change detection is that number 1 you avoid using properties you replace the properties with signals everywhere in your app if you want to work with zoneless mode so apart from not triggering the expensive change detection all of the time and just pinpointing that area where angular wants to make that change you can also use the reactive primitives that it provides the computed the effect to make your code cleaner 
in the end. Okay, the second takeaway is that event handlers and listeners will continue to trigger change detection as before. Now, I'm not sure if this will change in the future, but in the current version, in zoneless mode even, the event listeners are always going to trigger change detection as before. The third thing is, whenever you use observables, always use the async pipe because it has change detection built in and you can safely use it in a zoneless app as well. Okay, so that's what I learned from this simple demo app. And you can try this out, try this app out yourself. I've given a link to the live deployment of this in the description. And also the source code for this is available on uh, publicly on my GitHub, the link to which is given in uh, the description as well. So that you can change it, you can maybe improve upon it because I think it is a very great learning resource for those who want to understand change detection, especially uh, change detection in signals, especially going forward with the zoneless mode. So I for one am very excited about this new zoneless mode and, and the future that it brings for Angular developers where we can write even interactive apps such as animations and other such stuff without worrying about you know, calling change detection all of the time. And personally, I can also work on a little animation package that I've always wanted to for Angular, which will greatly simplify animations in your Angular apps. So stay subscribed and I'll see you in the next video with something more interesting. Thanks for watching.